Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. You need a filter. There's a lot of thoughts that pop into your head you don't need to say, such as, what am I going to eat? In other words, where will my provision come from? How am I going to have enough water to drink? What am I going to wear? Now notice this, and this is going to start getting us to the heart of the message tonight. Jesus said in verse 32, For after all these things the Gentiles seek. People without God live this way. If you have surrendered to Jesus as your Lord, you no longer live this way. Worrying, talking, oh no, how are we going to make it? Oh no, haven't you heard what's going on? Yeah, we've all heard it. It looks dark. Inflation's all around. Prices on everything are up. But I'm not going to be down and out. I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm not going to do what the Gentiles do and seek the things. He says, your heavenly Father, oh, please know this tonight, Matthew 6, 32, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He already knows. That'd be like my kids worrying, Dad, are you going to make sure we get something to eat? Now, I say that, but they, every day, are real quick to let me know, like, when they're hungry. Especially my son, Enoch, he'll come up, I'm hungry. I mean, if we, we just, the other day, we just went to the grocery store. And I don't know, maybe you need multiple kids. I know those that have them could probably say amen to this. You need a lock for the pantry. <laughs> I mean, we no longer got done going to the grocery store. What are you doing over there? I'm hungry. Well, you don't have to open both boxes of cereal. Put one of them back. Both boxes were out. I'm like, yeah, make a choice here. Well, they both look good. I know, but how hungry are you? But my kids don't worry. They don't worry about food. I already know they need some food. You know, I, <laughs> I'm not super old. I'm 43 years old. I'm smart enough to know you're going to get hungry again. You ate and I, and I stay on my children. Uh, you need to eat everything on your plate if you can. And they'll tell me, I mean, it's so funny. I can tell when they've been snacking again. This is a modern American problem here. Children like to snack more than sit down and eat a meal. I think, I think at least my boys for sure would love just to snack all day. Don't worry about meals. Just let me snack all day long. Donuts? Mmm, I want them. Right? Whatever it is. But here, here's the deal. They don't worry. They don't go to bed at night fretful. I wonder if dad and mom are going to provide for me tomorrow. You know, I'm going to figure out a way to put some bread on the table. Praise God. Because I serve a God that always provides. And we don't need to sit here. And we don't think like this. Many people don't. All the Gentiles, people without God, they seek all these things not realizing it's a slap in God's face. He already knows that you need all those things. Know that God understands what you need more than you understand what you need. You may think that you need something. God knows what you need. You got that? You may think, well, I really need this. I, mean, I don't know how I'm going to eat next week. God already knows. Don't get into worry. Stay in faith. Here's how that manifests itself. Verse 33, right here, look at it. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that he mentioned will be added to you. How many have heard that verse before? Yeah. Did you know that's supposed to be our life motto? We seek the kingdom and his righteousness first. What's right According to God. If you don't run that first in your mind, is this right before God, then you're liable to do anything and then later claim God's good with it. But he's not good with you doing your own thing. He's good with you seeking him first. Everybody say first. When God adds to your life, know this. I said it earlier, but know this. It doesn't matter what man does to you. God can add. He can get things to you even when man says, no, 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 you're not going to get it. God will still say yes. If you're seeking him, somebody might say to you, well, you don't have the education to, to be promoted. It doesn't matter. I serve Jehovah Jireh. Hey, he's going to provide. He's more than enough. 
Come on, somebody. The life that our fathers has designed is not that complicated. Listen, the life our father has designed is not that complicated. It's really not. It simply requires us to follow him. And the very first step is seeking him in all things. We are in covenant, let me remind you of this, with the Lord Jesus Christ through faith in his blood. You're in covenant with God. This means you belong to him. This means he is your provider. You need to know this, and it's so important, because you will serve your provider. You will be loyal to who you believe is your provider. That's why you've got to have this as a staple going into this economy that we have in America right now. You've got to have this as a staple in your life. I serve my provider. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806-418-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next LifeLink. If you seek God, He's going to provide for you. Well, Israel's a great example, and when you study, you find out this, that they would seek the Lord, and so they would increase. He would bless them. They would increase and increase, them and their children. They would experience victory after victory, but they were one country that's like many, many people have lived since them. They could not handle success. Success destroys many people because they stopped doing what got them there. I'm going to tell you, Seeking the Lord works for everybody, no matter your color of skin, no matter where you're from. If you will seek the Lord, you will start to increase. But once you increase, don't get fat and sassy and stop seeking the Lord. It's happened over and over in history. I don't know what it is. People say, oh, I'm on cruise control now. It's all good. No, no, listen to me. If you got there by seeking the Lord, seek the Lord. I dealt with this when it came to sowing. Because somebody had mentioned this to me. They said, oh, you're always challenging people to sow. It's easy to sow when you have abundance. I said, hold up. I started sowing before there was any abundance. When it was pretty much all that was in the account, if not all, at different times. That's where you start. We all start there. But listen, once you increase, don't stop sowing. It may seem easier But you might be shocked how much harder it is if you get attached to the harvest that's come in. What you've got to realize is this. We're here to seek the Lord, and he's going to provide, and he is a God that's too much. He is a God of overflow. He is a God that comes through in every situation, in every economy. Everyone in the whole world needs to hear this message. You seek the Lord, you'll increase. You can live in the jungles of Africa, and if you seek the Lord, you're going to increase. People say, well, I mean, come on. In America, I had a guy send me this, you know. uh, Do you own a car? Well, yes. Well, does your family have two cars? Well, yes. That puts you in the 98th percentile across the whole world. You're so rich. Hey, we're blessed, okay? I praise God. But see, there's no one that, that factors this in. I can't help I was born in a country that was the only country that the basis of law was founded on the Word of God. Therefore, increase did come to this country, and I was born in this country. I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm also not going to serve money. I'm going to serve God. And this is what you always got to get straight with all of this. This is why I'm receiving the offering at the end, because really this whole message is kind of about not just giving money, but your whole life. If you don't watch it, you're going to get caught up serving money. You've got to seek God. You've got to seek God. And when you increase, you seek God. If things are tight, you seek God. If you're walking in abundance, you seek God. You're not moved by money. You're moved by the Holy Spirit. Say this with me. I have an unction from the Holy Ghost. 
See, that's it. You don't move unless the Holy Spirit says move. Amen. He's your provider, the Lord is. Israel did this over and over again. They would seek the Lord. And in fact, I won't read it, but there's a place in one of the Chronicles where it says that they were so serious about it, they said, the whole nation, we're going to seek the Lord. And if you don't, we're going to kill you. (laughs) I mean, that's getting pretty passionate about seeking the Lord. But it's because they understood the power behind seeking the Lord. Do you understand the power behind seeking the Lord? Israel would seek the Lord. They would increase. They'd walk in victory. But then they would stop doing what got them there. The Bible would tell you, there's scriptures where it says they're in their paneled houses. Not one, but two at least. Sometimes they had more than that. Because God increases you. It is what it is. And those of you say, well, I only need enough for me and my family. Why don't you have two? Just imagine if you had two and then God kept increasing you and you made it real nice. You said, you know what? Anytime there's a guest minister, you can put them up there and you don't have to spend money on the hotel. Well, see, people don't think like that, do they? They're like, well, as long as I have enough for just me and mine, that's selfishness. But see, you might as well forget about that if you're not seeking the Lord and you don't even have one. No, I hate on anybody. I'm just saying, you got to start where you are. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. Have you ever heard the saying, there's no use crying over spilled milk? What do you do? Just clean it up and make sure you're more careful next time. Seek the Lord. If your life is like a trail of spilled milk, I'm sorry about that, but let's stop doing the same thing over and over. I mean, how smart is it to set the milk out and knock it over? Oh, no. Pick it up again. Knock it over again. Why would you do that? Clean it up, refill it. Knock it over again. At some point, don't you want to change That pattern that's leading you into this life of perpetual lack and poverty? Praise God. This is a good word. Amen. You know what I like? Shauna will say that. This is a good word. Because she'll go to work. I've watched her for years now. And she will absolutely outwork people that work with her. And so she's like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm going to go to this other job. I saw this happen. She goes, works another job. And they call her back. Can you come back? We can't find anyone that works like you. We'll give you a raise. And you know what happens? She starts seeking the Lord. She gets serious in her relationship with God. And it just so happens that there will be people come in, and next thing you know, they're going to drop her a big tip. And she's bussing tables. Now, here's what's so funny. See, people in society, well, anybody could bust a table, but they don't. They don't. But if you'll bust a table as unto the Lord, the Lord will make sure that you just happen to bust a table to the businessman that comes in and says, look at this diligence. She's had people say, I I need you to come work for me because I can't find anybody that works like that. You, listen, our society is set up for you to thrive. All you got to do is go and do hard work. And you'll just rise up to the top. Most people are surfing the web still at work. Most people on Facebook went into a place of business, needed some help, and I stood there, lady behind the desk. She didn't even look up, so I just stood there, stood there. So I walked around and looked. She was on Facebook. Dirty shame. Thankfully, I just went ahead and helped myself and did what I needed to do. But I thought to myself, you know, her boss, her leader, really needs to know about that. Because here it is. You walk in. You say, hey, how are you? It's amazing how people don't even know how to say hi anymore. (laughs) <laughs> you walk into a place or you go to a restaurant and it's like you have to chase the server down to even help you and you feel like you're putting them out. Wow. If you go, if you go work tables and you go with a smile, hey, how you doing? What can I help you with? It's going to catch the, the, the leader's attention. It's going to say, whoa, wait a minute. We got, a, we got somebody over here we can depend on. I'll tell you, people make life too complicated. If you'll seek him first, and that's, that's what's got you going, is I'm seeking the Lord, and I'm going here to please him. He's going to make sure that you increase. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. This happened to Israel. What? Success destroyed them. They stopped doing what got them uh, to success. And there's a story after story. You just ought to read the New Testament. But the Lord said this, I'm going to scatter you throughout the whole world because you won't seek me. And then he told them this in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Even in the state of being scattered across the whole world, look what the Lord says to him in Deuteronomy 4.29. He says, but from there, that's being scattered throughout the whole world, you will seek the Lord your God and 
you will find him. If, you got to force that one out. If you seek him with part of your heart and part of your soul. (laughs) The promise of finding God is to those that seek him with all their heart. God knows whether or not you're seeking him with all your heart. God knows whether you're doing that or not. And did you know that's all you can do is seek him with all your heart? And many times I felt like, well, that's not adequate enough, but that's what the Lord is looking for. His eyes run to and fro across all the earth. How many times have you heard me say that? Looking to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Let me tell you, are you loyal to get back and seek him? Whether you are riding high on victory tonight or you're in defeat, wherever you are between the spectrums tonight, let me tell you, it's not too late. You're breathing. It's time to seek the Lord. That's what he told Israel. You're scattered because of your rebellion, because you stopped seeking me. But if from there you will seek me with all your heart, you'll still find me. You know what that means? Maybe you've blown it over and over again. It's not too late to start seeking the Lord, and you'll find him. You'll find him if you seek him with all that you are. Many people are not interested in this, though. What? Giving all their heart. They'll give maybe half their heart because it's costly when you give all your heart. Because it's all you have. But the promise of finding God does not hinge on the Lord. It hinges on your seeking. And by the way, in case you're saying, well, why is he hiding? He's not hiding from you. He's hiding to see, are you interested? Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas, and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. God doesn't give the precious things of the kingdom like provision to those who really aren't interested in him. He's already got enough rebellious children. They've already walked in the goodness of God and got into rebellion, and they they start thinking they did it. It's It's really not about you or me. It's about obeying. And God's simply looking, are there vessels on earth that will obey me? If you'll obey God, he will show up in glory in your life. If you'll seek God, you'll find him if you seek him with all your heart. If you seek him partially, there's no guarantee you're going to find him. That means if you still hold back in an area, you won't find God in that area, and you'll wonder why. Well, he's not hiding from you, but he wants to know, how much do you desire me? That's what God wants to know. 1 Chronicles 16.8, look at this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Aren't you thankful for the word? Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, verse 9 of 1 Chronicles 16. Sing psalms to him. Talk of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A lack of rejoicing can be traced to a lack of seeking. When you seek the Lord, you're going to rejoice. That's what he said. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. So this means this. You can never get tired of seeking the Lord. So I thought, well, Lord, I know Wednesday night crowd at Accelerate Church has pretty much all heard about seeking the Lord. I'm going to preach it again anyway because I know he told me to because here's it. here it is. Evermore. That means even tonight you've got to seek the Lord. That means even tomorrow, I don't feel like it. It's Thursday. So what? Seek the Lord. What about Friday? Oh, it's the weekend. I get to relax and not even think about God. Uh Uh-oh. Evermore includes Friday. (laughs) 
Well, not Saturday. That's the old school Sabbath. You still seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. Seek the, look at your neighbor and say, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. And look, look at your neighbor again and say, don't ever stop. I want you to write this down. I said it earlier. Seeking the Lord works for everyone, but not everyone seeks the Lord. Here's how we seek the Lord. This scripture that we just read, these scriptures give us seven different things that show we're seeking the Lord. One, you give thanks. We seek the Lord by, number one, giving thanks. Everybody say, give thanks. Uh, I'm not confused. It's, that wasn't everyone. Everyone say, give thanks. give thanks. I'm not confused. This is not November. Thanksgiving is not coming tomorrow. But you know what you need to make tomorrow? You're on Thanksgiving anyway. If you make turkey and dressing, holler at me. Just kidding. Just kidding on that part. I'm just saying this. <laughs> Some people box thanks into Thanksgiving. Thanks is a lifestyle we have to live. If you lose your thanks and your thankfulness, you're going to end up losing out on what God's already given you. Boy, it's easy to do. You get married, you're so excited, you finally found someone to say yes to you, Justin Wyatt. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sorry, he is getting married Friday, and you're invited to come, by the way. Friday night, 7 o'clock, isn't that right? He's, are you excited? I know you are. I'm excited for you. He's getting married here to Miss Ashley. And you know what? I always love this part because it's so exciting. It's so fun. You get the thrills and the chills, and you see somebody walking down the aisle. I mean, think about it. It's amazing. I still remember more than 20 years ago when that happened to me. And I was like, as long as she don't just keep running out of here, praise the Lord. I want her to come right here and say, I do. But I remember that moment. You remember that moment too, huh? That's pretty recent for you still. Well, what a, what a thing. But did you know that when life starts happening, you have to stay thankful even after you say, I do? You can be thankful you found someone. Then they can tick you off before you leave it out here. And it's easy then to get angry and lose your thanks. The fact that you found someone that would put up with yourself and stay committed. Come on, somebody. These people don't ever like it when I go here. You can go find any Joe Blow out here or any sister. Well, I won't call any names. I'll just say you can find any woman. You can find any man out here that will go to bed with you. People are like, I can't believe you talk this way. Wake up. Well, where are you going to find someone that's going to commit to you? And then you find someone that commits to you, and you're not thankful anymore because they make you mad. Well, maybe you make them mad. But you got to stay thankful anyway. I'm going to tell you, the enemy is targeting marriages. But if you'll seek the Lord, it protects your marriage. And here's how you know that you're seeking the Lord. You give thanks. So the next time your spouse irks you to the point that you want to go off, stop, shut your trap, get by yourself, and do this. Watch. Do this. Lord, I thank you that I found someone willing to give their life to me. If you'll do that, it'll be amazing how God will start showing up instead of more flesh and more turmoil and more fighting and more. I'm worn out from this. Come on, somebody. I'll just tell you this. When, when you and your spouse are at it, it's like it don't really matter what else is going on in life. You're like, I got to get this straight. Well, I found out a little secret. If I'll start thanking God for my wife, especially when she ticks me off. Somebody sitting here, your wife ticks you off? Oh, yeah. But she makes me real happy, too. It's not, I'm not ticked off all the time. But those that you love the most can say things, and it can cut you, and you want to flare up. Anybody want to be real in here on Wednesday night? Well, when instead of lashing out that harsh answer, stop and give thanks. Stop and give thanks. Aren't you thankful? Now, it, it works for a lot more than just marriage. That's just one example. Thank God you have a job. Thank God you have a pastor and a church. Thank God there's a Christian school here. I mean, thank God there's Kingdom Keys you can listen to. Not every city has a Kingdom Keys network. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? There's a lot to be thankful for. Well, we seek the Lord by giving thanks. Number two, got to move here. By calling on his name. I'll tell you, this works to call on the name of Jesus. 
And this has a double meaning because calling on the name of Jesus doesn't just mean you say, Jesus, though that works. In fact, just yesterday we were driving down I-27, about 1230 in the afternoon here, and a familiar stretch of road for us, that's, that's our way home there, and right about at sundown, in fact, right underneath the bridge, we see a semi clip a Subaru at 70 miles an hour, goes full out sideways right in front of us in our lane, out into the ditch, through the little fences they put up that I've been critical of, but now I like, and it stopped them from going in the other lane, that's why I like them, and it didn't kill them, because they were out walking around a family, thank God. But here's what happened yet once again because I have a Holy Ghost filled wife who's paying attention. I'm telling you, it's so, she's so quick on that trigger. It's amazing to me. This is at least the third time we've been in a situation that could have been a very, very serious accident. It's just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It just comes right out of her. She started saying that. And I mean, my kids barely had time to look up and see the smoke from the car going in the ditch. I called 911, but I was thankful once again. That we can call on the name of Jesus. Amen. It works. It works. Now, if you don't live a lifestyle of serving the Lord and seeking the Lord, you can't just get yourself in a pickle and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Especially if you've been using his name as a curse word before that. Oh, yeah. You use his name as a, as a cuss word and a slang and then you want to call on his name in the moment of where you really need him, it, it's not going to work. This isn't like magic, okay? It's not like a, you wave a wand, the name of Jesus. That name is above every name, though. Right on the other hand, are you hearing me? It's above every name. So if cancer tries to rear its ugly head, you say in the name of Jesus, no. Just say it, no. no. Cancer, no. Cancer, no. In the name of Jesus. And I see you may not know, there's people right here have been diagnosed with it. Just last week, I'm minding my own business, walking down the hallway, and somebody says, I was just, they found cancer in my blood. I said, well, I'm going to lay hands on you right now. In the name of Jesus, I call on that name. We're going to seek the Lord, right? Now, let me just tell you this. It's not a lack of faith if you seek medical help. Don't set that up in your mind that it's an either-or situation. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. While that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.